Hello, I'm Rabbi Elton from the Great Synagogue in Sydney, and our personality today is Don Isaac of born in 1437 and died in 1508. It's very rare that you find in one person several outstanding characteristics. In the case of the Abarbanel, an extraordinary Jewish scholar, a government and royal advisor, and a great financier. He was born in Lisbon in 1437 and uh, soon marked himself out as a very great budding scholar of rabbinic literature and also of Jewish philosophy. And his first writings were in the area of philosophy, but he was also a genius when it came to finances. And he came to the attention of the King of Portugal and was employed by him in order to manage the royal accounts. Now, as often is the case with medieval kings, he fell foul of the uh, ruling powers and he had to flee Portugal. He went to Toledo in Castile in Spain and uh, began to work on his biblical commentaries on Judges and Joshua and Samuel. And there his expertise also came to the attention of the monarch, in this case, uh, Queen Isabella. He rose very high in her court, in the court of Spain more generally, until the Alhambra decree of 1492, which expelled the Jews from Spain. He spent a huge amount of his own money, or attempted to, in order to uh, bribe the monarchs to either fail to carry out the decree or to rescind it. None of that was to any avail, and he had to move on. Again, he wandered little around the Mediterranean area before settling eventually in Venice, where he died in 1508. His commentary is exceptional for at least two reasons. First of all, it's style. Now, in the case of most commentators, Rashi or the Ramban, as we've looked at in previous weeks, they take a line or a word or a verse and they try to explain what's going on. And they may write at some length, but essentially it's on a word-by-word -word or verse-by-verse -verse basis. The Abarbanel has a completely different technique. He begins with questions, sometimes a very large number of questions, on a particular passage or issue or concept that's raised in a biblical passage. And once he's laid out all the questions, he then goes on to try and answer them in a uh, holistic and uh, synthesized way. In fact, there's a joke uh, in rabbinic circles about the man who became a heretic because he went to the rabbi's class on the Abarbanel. He had a long day at work, and he'd go, he'd hear all the questions, fall asleep and hear none of the answers. So he came out with more questions than he had arrived with. In any case, this technique is very helpful in some instances, but it means that the Abarbanel's commentary is not something you can flick through as you can flick through Rashi or Ramban trying to look at a particular question on a particular word or verse. So you need a different approach to learning the Abarbanel than you would to other commentators. The other exceptional feature is his very anti monarchical slant. The books he treats, in particular Samuel and also Deuteronomy, Devarim, in the Chumash, in the Five Books of Moses, deal with uh, themes of kingship, appointing a king and how kings operate in practice, whether that's Saul or, or David. And it's open to dispute whether the Torah really wants a king, it's an ideal for the Torah, or it's a concession to uh, what the people might uh, desire, what the people might want. Well, the Abarbanel comes down very hard on the side that uh, monarchy is not an ideal system and that it's really a concession to the desire of the Israelite people. And one must think this is deeply informed by his very rough experiences with both the Portuguese and then the Spanish monarchs who used him and abused him, who he served loyally, and in the end uh, who exiled him when it was uh, convenient for them to do so. So a man who uh, lived very much in the wider world and brought his experience of the wider world into his perspective on Jewish texts and Jewish learning. Thanks for joining.